Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 23, Victor Laval. Victor Laval has been widely acclaimed as one of the foremost authors of contemporary horror and supernatural fiction. He grew up in New York City and got his academic training at a pair of Ivy League institutions, Cornell and Columbia, before publishing his debut, a collection of short stories entitled Slap Boxing with Jesus in 1999. In the ensuing years, Laval has published six more books and numerous standalone short stories, many of which have won or at least been nominated for prizes specific to science fiction, horror fiction, and fantasy literature. Much like the popular recent television series Lovecraft Country, Laval's work often attempts to expose the hidden monstrosity inside seemingly ordinary depictions of American life. Sometimes this unseen evil reveals itself as psychological instability, but in his most recent books, its presence becomes a symbol for the lingering effects of the grimmer aspects of America's history, particularly in regard to its treatment of African Americans. This excerpt from Laval's thoroughly unconventional contemporary horror novel, The Changeling, describes the daily routine of a 30-something African-American man named Apollo Kagwa, who runs a struggling antiquarian book business in New York City to provide for his wife and young son. The emotional details of being the father of a toddler are, as I can personally attest, startlingly accurate, but they're also in dramatic contrast to the novel's shockingly dark secrets, none of which I'll spoil for you here. Apollo had become one of those men, the new dads, so much better than the old dads of the past. New dads wear their children. New dads change the baby's diaper three times a night. New dads do the dishes and the laundry. New dads cook the meals. New dads read the infant development books and do more research online. New dads apply coconut oil to the baby's crotch to avoid diaper rash. New dads bake sweet potatoes, then grind them in the blender once the baby's old enough for solid foods. New dads carry the diaper bag, really a big old purse, without awareness or shame. New dads are emotionally available. New dads do half the housework, really more like 35%, but that's still so much better than zero. New dads fix all the mistakes the old dads make. New dads are the future, or at least they plan to be, but since they're making all this shit up as they go along, new dads are also scared as hell. 5.30 in the morning and the parents were already out at Bennett Park, there were moms in a huddle at one end of the playground over by the swings. Apollo sought out the other new dads, four of them already there by the padded play squares. Apollo made five, most of them in their 30s or early 40s. One guy might be 50 or just in terrible shape. Apollo greeted the other fathers and they greeted him. He didn't remember their names and they didn't remember his. They knew the names of each other's children and that mattered more. The other dads crowded closer and asked after Brian's development, like coaches eyeballing a rival player. And Brian rolled over on his own yet? Transferred objects from one hand to the other? Raked up Cheerios by himself? The fathers bandied these questions about, half curious and half competitive. But Apollo didn't mind. In fact, he enjoyed it just about as much as them. He said nothing of the tremendous book he'd found the day before. Why would he? None of these men talked about their jobs or their hopes or their dreams. Not when there were children to discuss. Apollo took out his phone and snapped a dozen pictures of Brian there on the rubber matting. The post from yesterday, the pictures of Brian in the Riverdale basement, had been a hit, at least the first few. Apollo logged onto Facebook and, just to be thorough, uploaded the images he'd just taken. All twelve. For more information about Laval and his work, click on the link above to visit his personal website. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of A Deeper Dive into African American Literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, 
as well as to David Summer's team and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio.